Frazier adding more numbers, more yards to those. Oh, they don't have him yet? Look at Tommy Frazier. How many tackles can one man break? Touchdown. What's up, everybody, and welcome back into the Play the Fights on College Football Show, the Nebraska side of things. And if it's your first time here, let me tell you a little bit about what we do here. We're going to preview and recap week to week, and my previews are solely based upon the other team. What you can look for, names to watch, homecomings for Nebraska kids that maybe play in other programs, good things like that. So if you're first time here, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. We do have a little challenge going with the other host. I have Iowa, Iowa State, and Syracuse on the podcast. Those are the four hosts of the main show. Which check that out. It covers all of college football. There's a live show actually tonight, so give that a look if you're scrolling by on YouTube around 6.30 Eastern time tonight. But they all challenge me and say, you know, Nebraska's best fan base. Why does it cost to advertise more with Nebraska when we're looking into things like that? Well, it's because that's just how good the fan base is. They support one another. And I am looking for that here when it comes to subscribing, when it comes to liking this video, I love blowing their fan bases out of the water. This by far does our best and it's because there's no better place in the world than Nebraska. There's no place like it. So give it a like, subscribe, let's blow these numbers up, show the other fan bases what we're about. But tonight we're going to recap you and I, and then we are going to go into Illinois, which is obviously a big ranked matchup in Lincoln this week. So let's do that. Leading off, let's talk about you and I last week, you and I. They were slow, just like we thought. Uh, my th- score guess, if you were a part of the show last week, was 34 to 10. So there was a very, very small part of me that was like, you know, if they score here at the end, I'm going to look very smart. So that sounds good. It was kind of a win-win situation for me. But I'm also very glad that the twos could make that stop. That's really good depth-wise when it comes to Big Ten play as well. So 34 to 3 Nebraska rolls. I thought we looked pretty sound for the most part. Obviously, some tackling issues on the defensive side of the ball. You and I dominated time of possession, but that's just kind of what they do. So it wasn't a big red flag for me when it came to the game as a whole. Going into our offensive side of things, I think Dylan looked really good. He made a couple of plays, extended a couple of plays that you and I could have easily blown up. And then we ran the ball pretty efficiently. I think we averaged over six yards a carry in the game. I know people were a little questionable when it came to the run game. I I saw a take out there that you and I ran the ball better than us. It's just simply not true, uh, especially with the backs that you and I has and kind of what they do as a program. So I thought it was all in all successful, both on the offensive and defense side of the ball. We played a lot of twos. It was a very split game. Like even in the first half, there was a few times where you look out there and you're like, man, what is this defensive line? No Nash, no Ty. Like a lot of those guys got rest. Jamari didn't even play. Bayer could have come back in the second half. He didn't even play. So we got a lot of rest for guys, which is good rolling into conference play. And that's a plus-plus situation when you're in a 3-0 and spot and you guys got guys coming off rest with no bye week already. So going into Illinois, I think the vibes are high, obviously. We need another great atmosphere. The 400 sellout at Memorial Stadium this Friday night. It's going to be a fun one. But I don't want to go – I don't think there's more than that when it comes to you and I. I thought we were pretty good. We were pretty sound. Um, A couple of penalties need to be fixed here and there. We still had a a few procedural penalties and holding penalties that we need to clean up, especially when it comes to Big Ten play, when you're going to get in these low-scoring battles with programs like Illinois, who we're going to break down. But I like the spot we're in, especially rolling into another home game, and hopefully we can get off to a 4-0 start. That's all I have on you and I. Let's go into Illinois. That's why you're here. You want to hear about Illinois, what they're like. I'm sure you've seen a bunch. We're a little, we're a day later in the week. So you've probably seen a lot. My research did not change. It started on Sunday night. I wanted to watch all the film um, from all three of their games. You and I, not you and I, sorry. I wanted to watch the film from all three of their games, but Illinois rolls in three and oh, we have a 14 and six all time record against Illinois. So Pretty handily dominate that. We beat them last year 20-7, to also on a Friday night in Champaign. Their three wins consist of a win against Eastern Illinois, not a very good program, 45-0. A ranked Kansas at the time, 23-17. to And then Central Michigan this past week, who has an Iowa transfer at quarterback, fun fact, at 30-9. So they're 3-0. They just got ranked this week. I believe they're in at 24. We're in at 22. So it's the first time we've hosted a ranked matchup in Lincoln in quite some time. 
And that's to be expected when you've had the last seven years like we have. So their head coach, Brett Bielema, everybody knows that. Bigger guy, a lot of experience in the Big Ten. His play style really matches the Big Ten well and kind of what you want to do to win within the conference. He's had some really good teams, and he's had some underperforming teams, kind of like last year, to where I don't know if the Illinois fan base loves Brett Beal. I really couldn't get a grip on that reading through their Twitter, listening to some different shows. I couldn't really get a grip if they were more uh, on the side of, hey, it may be time to move on, or he's doing enough because we really are just kind of waiting for basketball season. I don't think that's the case. I think this year they're, they're off to such a good start. And Luke Altmeyer looks like he's made some really good developmental changes that the fan base feels okay with where the program's at. They do have new coaches at defensive back, linebacker, inside linebacker, and wide receiver. So they made some changes from last year's staff. Uh, and I think that was simply because they underperformed last year. I mean, I think I, people weren't extremely high on Illinois, but it wasn't a team that you thought was going to be as bad as they were, especially on offense. But that may have been a shock to us on the defense side of the ball as well. Like we thought we were going to be good last year on defense. Did we think we were going to be that good implementing a new scheme with a new coach in year one? No, but you can see how you can build off that. And I think that's kind of looking what they're looking to establish over there in Champaign. Homecomings. We'll keep this light. There's only one I could find. Tanner Tanner Hollinger. He's a freshman tight end from Stromsburg, Nebraska. He's not going to play very much, but that was the only name listed I could see with the old N-E next to his name. So welcome back, Tanner. All right, let's go into the full look of the team and the offense. The offense doesn't look like blow away. It looks exactly like a Brett Bielema offense, what you would expect. A lot of run, heavy set. Um, RPO looks pistol a majority of the time when they run dive left, dive right. But I saw a majority from what they've been running, especially against Central Michigan. It's a lot of RPO, which was genuinely shocking to me. It's not a bad thing. It's something that we can, we have a really good inside run defense. So it's not something that terrifies me. I get more nervous when they run to the outside. That's where you see teams beat us quite a few times. But Bullock's been really good at sealing the edge there. I thought, Buford shocked me. I'm not going to lie to you. Buford shocked me on how well he's getting off blocks on the outside. I mean, he made a great take, tackle last week against you and I, where he was being held. Got They threw a flag for holding, and Buford also made the tackle after being held. So plays like that are really good signs for Nebraska's secondary. Who's playing quarterback for Illinois? Everybody should know this name. This is Luke Altmeyer. He's a junior. It feels like he's been there for five years. He's only a junior. He's listed at 6'2", 205. I don't know if many people remember this, but Luke Allmeyer is an Ole Miss transfer. So he's got SEC talent, but he just hasn't been that factor for Illinois quite yet. He's off to an absolutely splendid start for them this year. He's had some turnover issues in the past. We forced a couple of turnovers against him last year, but he hasn't had those issues thus far. Six touchdowns, no picks. That's super important in Illinois' offense is to be very sound, kind of like an Iowa type to where they're not going to beat themselves. And he's done a great job of that this year. 15 for 78 on the year for 647 yards. His longest pass of the year was a 42-yarder. They have some good weapons on the outside, another added weapon this year, and a lot of experience on the outside too. So that helps throwing the ball downfield. A lot of their downfield passes are set up off of play action, and they want to get Altmeyer running. He can move a little bit. It's not going to be a lot of designed runs, but he's very good at extending plays, getting outside of the pocket, and finding somebody down the field. So containment's a big part. Our linebackers have to play well again. I'm glad we got Bayer back this week. We should have a healthy unit. Stephon Thompson should make an impact depth-wise. So containing Luke Altmeyer on the outside, both extending plays and maybe a quarterback draw or, or a designed run somehow in a third and short situation is going to be something that we're going to see pretty consistently throughout this game. The backs. The backs are pretty good. But one short thing I want to mention beforehand is I do think we can get to Altmeyer. I wasn't super impressed with their pass protection. It doesn't last forever. He's just very good at extending the play. So wrapping up is important, which we didn't do a fantastic job at last week. But I think we can get to him three or four times. That's my guess. Three, three and a half, four times is what we get to Altmeyer this week. It won't be Shadur level, but we still can sack the quarterback just like we did last year. Looking at the backs for Illinois, there's a couple I want to note. Their starter, Caden Fegan, he's going to get the majority of the carries. He's a sophomore, listed at 6'3", 250. Pretty good back, not a ton of breakaway speed, but he did have a big game against Eastern Illinois, 150 yards on the ground there. And then last week against Central Michigan, 
10 rushes for 25 yards and one touchdown against a better run defense. Obviously not up to Nebraska caliber, but two and a half yards per carry is not going to move the needle, but he will be the majority ball carrier. I mean, he's going to be the the go-to guy. He is the starter. One guy I do want to note, and this isn't a starter, and I don't actually think he's listed at third on their depth chart, but he made an impact for him last week, and that's Josh McCray. It's the guy pictured on the right here. He's a junior. He doesn't get a ton of carries, but he's pretty impactful, and he was last week against Central Michigan and against Kansas. He's more of a bowling ball type build, six foot, 235, so kind of that short RPO look that you kind of want, but he's got some experience. He's not going to be their leading carrier by any means, but a guy I definitely want to note as maybe having an impact in the game here and there in this backfield. A wide receiver. Their wide receivers are pretty good. Looking at the left side, that's Pat Bryant. He's been in this program for quite some time. He's a senior. He's their leader in targets this year. A ton of experience. And this is where I kind of expect Tommy Hill to match up against him. Tommy Hill did a pretty good job at containing Travis Hunter in week two. But this is a more sound, not as explosive, and obviously highly touted wide receiver that kind of knows what he's doing within the conference. 15 receptions, 235 yards, and four touchdowns on the year. He's going to be good. He's just going to be a very sound Illinois-style wide receiver, a Bielema-style wide receiver as much as you can be. On the right side, this is a transfer pickup that has been pretty impactful. Super athletic, Ole Miss transfer Zachary Franklin. Decent amount of targets this year. He's a really explosive athlete. He's made a a few catches that are just blow your mind good, but he's also had his problems. He fumbled the ball once in, in a big spot against Kansas. But he's a very good athlete nonetheless. Like definitely a guy that's going to be targeted, whether or not it's in the screen game or downfield. That one-hand catch, if you haven't gotten a chance to look at it, go take a look at it. It's probably one of the better catches in college football this year. But he can hurt you downfield. This is the guy that, you know, if Altmeyer can extend those plays like we talked about, he's going to look for Zachary Franklin down the field because he'll create separation if you give him too much time. So getting to the quarterback, hurrying Altmeyer into those bad decisions is incredibly important for Nebraska's defense. This will be the Hartzog and Buford kind of combo target in my mind. All right, moving on to the defense. The defense has looked pretty decent. They're ranked kind of up next to us. However, I think when you look at Illinois as a whole, you go, oh, they're 3-0. They're ranked good team. A lot of the stuff on paper is the same as us. Their defense is a little bit behind us, but their biggest win, obviously, is that Kansas game. And that Kansas game lost a lot of steam last week when Kansas lost to UNLV. So this isn't a team I should say we we should be terrified of. I think we match up very similar on paper, and everybody can agree with that. But I like us being at home in a big spot, you know, with all the momentum it feels like. They feel like they're in a similar spot, but there are a little more question marks. There are a few more question marks out there on this program and this team than there I'd say there would be on us. We'll just see. I'm just getting nervous when it comes to those Big Ten style games with Brett Bielema. Like, is it going to come down to a field goal? Because our field goal operations have been terrible. But we'll talk about their special teams too at the, here at the end. But taking a look at their defense, it's a four three base, pretty basic. They like to bring a linebacker on the blitz here and there. Majority of it soft bubble coverage. I think that we can beat them with slants, with Nair, with Banks. I like Jalen Lloyd in the slant game too to break one off if he gets in the game and gets considerable reps, especially after last week. But Nair and Banks are obviously big body guys who have a ton of experience, maybe less Nair and more Banks. But the slant game can be huge here with the kind of the defensive sets they are consistently in. They really emphasize taking away the deep ball. That's why you see that bubble coverage, that that non-press coverage. I really do think that, you know, there's not going to be a ton of opportunities this week for Dylan to drop back and kind of heave one like he has in this first these first three games. He didn't really do it much against Colorado, but he has in the other two where he just takes a shot if he finds one-on-one coverage. The way they run this defense is not for that situation. The starting side of their defense, that defensive line, it didn't blow me away how good they were. Usually Illinois is pretty good in the trenches. They struggled with that last year, so they're looking to take a step forward. The defensive line is not like the star of the show here. If they had a player that was the star of the show, that'd be Florida State transfer Dennis Briggs Jr. pictured on the left here. He's pretty good. 14 tackles, 7 solo, and a sack last week against Central Michigan. He's pretty quick off the edge. I think the matchup you'll see pretty consistently is Ben Hart against him. If not, it'll be that interior defensive line with Latoski and Ben Scott, which I I like that combo. I thought Latoski played pretty good last week. Um, But that's kind of the main star of the show. 
The outside, the picture on the right, that's Matthew Bailey. He's a, at, off to a red-hot start in their defensive backfield. 17 tackles, 9 solo. He's pretty quick, really puts himself in good positions. This defense, I will say, is a very basic, simplistic scheme that doesn't allow for many mistakes of like, I don't know where I was going, I covered the wrong guy, broken coverage, things like that. It's very laid out to be simple. Kind of the opposite of the three three five, where everybody has their assignment, and if you don't execute it, you can get beat where it's more of an NFL look. This is base multiple four, three base where like you're going to have option a, and that's my, what I'm responsible for. That's kind of how he sets it up. And that's why they're pretty sound throughout games. They like to force turnovers. That's when they found success this year. They forced three against Kansas. They forced a couple against central Michigan picks down the field on extended plays. Dylan's got to avoid. He's like to throw the ball deep late in a play, but they really do disguise a lot of these coverages to where it looks like man, and all of a sudden, here comes a, a cover two, cover three zone, and we find ourselves in tough spots, and they're just running in front of routes to pick it off. We have to avoid those scenarios. Their defense likes to force turnovers, as all of them do, but they have done it pretty well throughout this year. I believe they're plus eight in the turnover margin range. At linebacker, none of them are pictured, but both of their main linebackers have sacks and are up there in tackles. They do miss on the middle run game a few times. I do like Dowdell, Ramirez, and Emmett up the middle for a games of 15 to 20 so at a few points in this game. That's where they struggled this year, both against Kansas and against Central Michigan, is that middle run game, which you don't find usually, especially within the Big Ten. But that's where I expect Nebraska to kind of to target throughout the run game is right up the middle, right between the tackles. So that that is what I would look for within the Illinois defense. Their kicking game, I do want to make a note because that is of note in Big Ten football games, but their kicking game is really good. They have two good kickers that have been consistent throughout this season, and they have some experience. Their main guy was 11 for 11 on extra points. Obviously, that's not important, but they're going to, I think they kick three or more field goals in this game with Nebraska's defense and kind of how we looked in that Ben don't break mentality last week. I really think that there are some scenarios this week where we're going to make Illinois kick a decent amount of field goals. They did have a second kicker that kicks longer field goals that drilled a 59-yarder last week against Central Michigan, and it had probably five or six yards on it. So they can kick it from deep. They're going to get themselves in a lot of scoring scenarios just by three points. And that's what Brett, Brett Biuma doesn't mind doing that. So I would look for that, especially with kind of how Nebraska's defense looked and how many field goals we've given up versus touchdowns this year. If we can limit the touchdowns and hold them the field goals, obviously you think you're in, off in a better spot. All in all, I like our matchups on offense, especially on the outside. They're not as good in the defensive backfield as they have been in the past with Witherspoons and guys like that. I like Jalen Lloyd downfield. If we're going to take a shot just because of his speed matchup, I don't really see anybody on that defensive side of the ball that can match his speed on the offensive side of the ball. On, I'm sorry, on their defensive side of the ball, on our offensive side of the ball, the main focus has got to be that middle run game to kind of expose them, wear them down, and then we can take our shots based off that when they try and collapse, load up the box eight or nine to stop that middle run. On our defense side of the ball, their offense side of the ball, we got to force turnovers. Altmeyer hasn't found himself in a spot where they're trying to work backwards from a few turnovers. I think if we get one or two here, we're going to put ourselves in a really good spot and hopefully another tough environment, 400 sellout, loud enough to be similar to Colorado, and we can handle business here on Friday night. Do I think Nebraska do, does so? And remember, I was only seven points off and probably should have been right on last week's score prediction. But just from what I looked at, I like Nebraska in this one. I like him 27-19. That is right around where the spread is at. But this is a good scenario for Nebraska and the fact that of what Illinois offense likes to do. It's not similar to you and I to where they're going to run the ball 75 times. It's not similar to Colorado where they're going to throw the ball 50 times. It's kind of right in the middle, and a lot of their passing is based off the running, so if we can shut down the run early, we really shut their playbook down. I like Nebraska in this spot. 27-19 is my score guess, and if you've never been a part of this preview or this show, and you've made it all the way here to the end just to see my score prediction, you can win a free cap from our great partners at No Rivals at shopnorivals.com. Go out, pick a hat. They don't have Nebraska yet. They don't have Illinois yet. However, they do have a bunch of other collegiate teams, and we're adding more by the day. You can also request your team, but you get a free hat from No Rivals on me, on the show. I will send it directly to you if you hit the score prediction on the head. Drop your score prediction below, like the video, subscribe to the page, watch college football, watch our college football show tonight 
Wednesday night as it's very important. And we're going to preview this game. So you're going to hear from an Iowa, Iowa State fan and a Syracuse fan, their thoughts on this matchup. I'm excited to break that one down with them. Obviously, you're here in the most important part, breaking down the game as a whole. I like us in this matchup. I like us to start 4-0, which feels good to say. 3-0 feels great, but 4-0 feels a little bit better. And I feel like everybody can agree with me there. So I appreciate you being here. Drop that score prediction. Subscribe to the channel. Follow us on X. Play the Fight Pod. We got tons of content going out there all the time. I appreciate you being here. We'll see you next time. Go Big Red.